so I wrote down some things that I wanted to talk about and I don't think that I'm going to talk about them directly because you know it's on the chance that someone might see this that I know I don't really want to reveal anything about my life that I'm not yet comfortable revealing about but the first thing I wanted to talk about was people who have a weird way of remaining in your life long after you don't talk to them anymore. And for me, it's a very frequent topic that I think about because given my environmental circumstances right now, I don't really have that much, you know, things to do. So naturally I reflect a lot on my past and the people that used to be in my life and how they've shaped me to become the person that I become now basically. And it's so weird because to a certain extent I still feel close to these people, in my mind at least because they occasionally pop up in my dreams because they occupy quite a bit of my personality, to be honest. And realistically, I think they're probably just gonna be there forever, honestly. Um, but it's really weird knowing that they're having their own lives right now that is completely separate from your life. It's not that there's anything specific that bothers me about it, but I just think it's a weird concept how people who can shape you so profoundly don't have to be in your life all the time. And more than that, just the unequalness in which some people can affect your life more than others. It's I don't know. There are certain people I think about quite a bit because just given the limited social life I, I have right now. And it makes me feel weak to a certain extent, the fact that some people are still in my life, that they're in my life, but I'm not in their life. and. It's weird that this can exist at all, you know, like, I think it's probably happened vice versa before where people thought I was very impactful on their life, but I didn't really feel the same way. And it's just really interesting how this type of loop just happens. I don't really know what to think about it, to be honest. It's inevitable um, that inequities in relationships exist, but it's really weird that it happens at all. And I don't know. So more recently, um, someone reached out to me that I used to know, or at least I was, I used to be close to them. And they just left me, you know, a pretty long paragraph about things that, <sighs> yeah, honestly, this is why I need to go to therapy, because as much as like talking to a camera is therapeutic to a certain extent, I don't feel the same pressure to, or about it actually, I feel pressure to kind of reach something in conclusion to my ramblings. As opposed to in therapy, like nothing is recorded, you can just talk as you will without the need to make it into something. Whereas with vlogging, it's not the case. You need to make it into something or else it was just like a waste of time. But going back to this incident, 
You know how when some people text you and you re reply like right away? I think that's very reflective of, it's, it's kind of like a microcosm of how I kind of view relationships, you know? Because if you use the idle time um, in replying to someone as like a proxy of how close you are to someone, then you can show how close you are to someone by how long it takes you to reply to someone and vice versa. And there's some people I reply to very quickly. And then there are certain people who I don't really reply to at all, actually. For me, I think this is more because I'm just weird, but I'm extremely deliberate about who I reply to and when I reply to them. If I'm close to someone, I would reply to them as soon as possible, you know, within minutes, like right when I receive it. But if I'm not as close to them, I'll take a couple of days, not because it actually takes me a couple of days to compose a message, but just because I kind of want that couple of days to pass to reflect the level of intimacy that I hold to them. And there are certain instances, there are certain people where I reply to them very quickly and they reply to me very slowly. And it's just reflective of the fact that I feel closer to them that than they feel towards me. It's kind of one of those things that doesn't really make you feel great, you know? Mostly because it's like, you can't help it. You can't help who you feel close to, regardless of how close you guys actually are. And so when you're faced with a situation like this, you have to use your logic more than your feelings because your feelings in this case are lying to you. So you have to think through your feelings and towards the actual situation itself and you can directly evaluate, okay, this person is more important to me than I am to them. And as a result, you have to let your behavior reflect the logic of the situation. You have to make yourself more indifferent in order to equalize the balance of the relationship. But it's like, it's really not what I want to do, you know? It's one of those things where it's like, it's the same thing I honestly experienced freshman year, where I was like really into this girl who wasn't into me, and just like spending time with her it just really hurt me, I think, because it was just a constant reminder of this imbalance in our friendship. and. I think likewise now, I still don't like imbalance, you know, like, even though I've changed a lot since freshman year, obviously, at the end of the day, it's still a lot of these core values I have about what is considered to be a healthy relationship. It's been refined a lot over the years, but at core, it's still the same. It's still about balance and openness. And just the fact that 
you guys are on the same page, you know? And it's a pretty rare thing, to be honest. Having true balance in a relationship. And in particular, I think right now I've been more willing than before to just leave people in my life. Like, I used to never get the concept of ghosting people, you know, just one second they exist in your life and then cutting them off completely, but I kind of get it more now, you know, because honesty, trying to repair something is, is something only reserved for friends that you care about where you are on the same page as someone and where you're giving equal amounts of energy into the friendship and in a lot of cases that's not always the case in a lot of cases friendships are imbalanced and then both sides are just calibrating what they perceive to be a good balance but it's just a state of the world it's a rule that I don't really like because there's so many friendships where I want to give more energy but if it's not returned, then I kind of just use my brain and kind of force myself to limit the energy I give to something. But it's just, it's never what I want. And I think lately, there are a lot of friendships in which I realize um, I was putting a lot more energy in than I was receiving and I think I've just been more acutely aware of that as a recent and it led me to just realize like I don't need this in my life I can be pretty comfortable by myself I don't need people in my life but it's always nice to have, you know, but if they don't fit the standards of balance I have in friendships, then there's po no point in keeping it up at all because I think people are very self-centered, myself included, in this day and age. I think that we have so much entertainment available all the time that we don't really need friendship to the same degree that we might have, you know, before the internet. And as a result, everyone has their own standards that they put onto friendship and people who don't match those kinds of standards don't make it into their life. And I think I fit this norm, you know, more than a lot of other people. I'm pretty, I'm like very particular in what kind of energy I allow in my life, but I just want to live in a world where everyone has just energy to give people. And where you don't feel like you're, you know, putting your energy into a black hole that just sucks and never gives back. And I don't know. I don't feel really great. There's some times where I feel good, especially in the mornings, but around the afternoon, I just 
really don't feel as good anymore. And I kind of just need this time to pass before I get some of my energy back. Yeah, I think your dreams are very interesting because people who aren't in your life anymore can still exist in your dreams and you can have conversations with them in your dreams and even though you don't remember the content of these conversations, you can still remember how they made you feel and how people in your who aren't in your life anymore can still influence you despite that fact. 